Perfect, perfect. Good morning, how's it going? Okay, sweet. Um, basically at this point, um, happy Thursday. Today, um, we're gonna make sure that we have our homework doing the bin, as we be in class. Homework doing the bin. Um, and you should have picked up the lab as you walked in. The lab is on the front, and we have our new homework on the back. So our new homework here is four problems, and we'll be doing next Thursday. So make sure you take a look. We'll review um, the homework at the end of class to go over it. Um, so let's look at our lesson objective and date for today. So today our lesson is horizontal projectile motion. And our objective is students will be able to predict the landing point of a horizontally shot projectile. Students will be able to predict the landing point of a horizontally shot projectile. And my quote for the day is from my third grade teacher, Ms. Bales. She said that, shoot for the moon and you may land on the stars. You guys like that quote? Basic. <laughs> I think it's a pretty good quote. I don't know if science confirms it, but I really like it. Um, shoot for the moon, and even if you miss, you may land upon the stars. So why did I use that quote for, for today? Does anyone know? Oh, okay, yeah, for the lab. So, what did we discuss yesterday? You can yell it out. What did we discuss yesterday in class? Projectile. Yell it out. Projectile motion. Projectile motion, okay. Do we study angle projectile motion or horizontal? Horizontal. Horizontal, okay, good. So today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be predicting the point of a horizontally launched projectile. So, we're doing a lab as we've talked about today called shoot for your grade. So that's why I use the quote for shoot today. Shoot for your grade. So today's an inquiry lab. You're gonna follow along with me. We'll read through um, the purpose and then we'll go through the supplies and we'll get going. Here we go. So um, basically what we're gonna do today is take what we've learned yesterday in class, horizontal projectile motion. We did some problems and we're gonna apply it with a real world problem. We're gonna apply it with a real world inquiry, inquiry lab. And you're gonna be able to see horizontal projectile motion in action. And I'm gonna to prove to you today that science does work 100% of the time. All right, let's do it. So the purpose of today is to investigate the independence of horizontal and vertical components of motion and to predict the landing point of a projectile. Um, what I put on your lab table today are pretty simple supplies. I've got a metric ruler, some piece of paper, a stopwatch, a window corner bead, window corner bead, a um, cup with a marble inside, and four physics textbooks. And what we're gonna do today is pretty straightforward. So if you read right here, in this part of the lab, you will construct a ramp out of a window corner bead and physics textbooks. Your goal is to predict where to place the cup to catch the horizontally projected ball. Your ball should travel down the ramp, then roll straight for a 0.5 to one meter and roll off the table. And then what we're gonna do is use our physics knowledge today to predict when the ball rolls off the table, where exactly will it land. We're not going to just put the cup and keep guessing and checking. We're gonna actually predict using math, using physics, using what we learned yesterday to predict where to put the target to catch the ball. It's awesome, you're gonna love it. So here we go, what we're gonna do first is I want you to start by constructing your lab apparatus today. So you can do it one of two ways. The first way is you can put the window corner bead um, on the top of this incline right here, tape it up, and have it roll off the table this way. Or you can elevate your physics textbooks in a stack, and then tape the window corner bead like so, and let it roll off a longer distance. It's really up to you. So there's two ways to do it. I included uh, a meter and a half of tape right here. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna, we'll divide off into sections, right, so you can work with them, save you can work with them, and then we'll split you guys off here, and I included one set up for you five back there. And what we're gonna do is take the next two minutes to construct your apparatus. So all you're doing is, all you're doing is um, taping your window corner bead to the textbooks or the desk up here. Does anyone have any questions before we try this? All right, here we go. So work with your group and construct your apparatus for the lab. Go for it. Nice. 
Let's work. You have the tape right here. Construct it so that it will. You can create a ramp and that the ball will fall and roll off the table. Mm -hmm. Anywhere you want. Mm -hmm. I'm just waiting until we use the textbook for this. So let's make sure our, our notebook is out. Right under our lesson objective and date, we'll start the lab for today. No, it doesn't matter. OK, what you're going to look at is the lab I gave you for today. So put the lab in front of you. The lab I gave you for today. Walk the lab in front of you. And what's the first step of any horizontal projectile motion problem we learned from yesterday? What's our first step? The drawing. The drawing, right? So what we have right here, right here is we have a ramp. And this ramp is going to, we're going to put our marble down. The marble is going to roll. It's going to gain some speed. It's going to hit the table and roll flat and then jump flat off the table and onto the ground. That's horizontal projectile motion. It's horizontally being projected off the table with only an X speed to start off with. And then it's going to follow its path. What is the word we use for path? Um, trajectory. trajectory, fall down to the ground, and hit our target. So we're going to basically be making a horizontal projectile motion problem. Rather than just solving one out, hypothetically, we're going to be making one right now. So we'll start with our sketch. So I drew my sample sketch up here. I want you in your box where it says draw a picture here. Draw a sketch of what your lab setup looks like right now. It can look like whatever you want. It doesn't matter what the picture looks like as long as it's a sketch of what your setup looks like. And then lastly, draw the path or the trajectory that the ball will take. Is that big box the table? Yeah, that's my table. Do you like it? <laughs> draw the trajectory that your ball will take when it rolls off. So your sketch should take you, I don't know, 30 more seconds or so? 30 more seconds, draw a little sketch of your setup. And then show again the trajectory of the ball as it falls to the ground. So remember, it doesn't have to be a good picture at all. Just drawing what you see. Bless you. All right, sweet. Let's do this. So after we draw our sketch, what would be our next step to our horizontal projectile motion problem? Yeah. Yeah. You got to write. You got to use the chart to write what you're given and what we don't know. What does the problem give us? What does the problem not give us? What are we trying to solve for? So let's let's kick it. You have your table on the right here. Um, just like we did yesterday, we have our x component, which is our horizontal component. We have our y component, which is our vertical. And then we have what we're trying to find, the i, the f, a, d, and t. And again, the purpose of this project, our final purpose, is to find where the ball will land, where the ball will land. So what is that, what is that variable that we're trying to find? Distance. Distance. In what direction? X or y? 
Right. Are we trying to find how far it falls or how long it falls? How long? How long? So is that dx or dy? Dx. 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 Yeah. So dx is going to be our big, big question mark. It's going to be our big question mark. So we, that's what we're trying to find today. So let's start with what we have. What does this problem give us? All right. Um, v i in x direction. Do we know its initial speed yet? Yeah. Do we? We actually don't know its initial speed coming off the table, but the good thing is we're going to find it. So what I have is I brought in um, b speed of velocity meters, and we can measure the velocity of the ball as it goes under the meter, and we'll do that in a second. So we're going to measure how fast the ball is moving as it leaves your table, and that's our initial x velocity. Um, so we'll do that in one second. Do we know our initial y velocity? What is it? Zero. Zero, because it's horizontally projected. So you can write zero meters per second in your initial y velocity. What about final velocity in the x direction? Do we know that? No. We don't, but we know it's the same as vix. So these two are just the same. We know that. And vfy, we don't know how fast it's going to be when it hits the ground, but we can figure that out. So this is, again, another question mark, so we can leave this blank. Um, but let's keep going. Acceleration in the x direction, do we know that? No. What do we know about the fact that the Zero. initial velocity and the final velocity stays the same? What do we know? Zero. That the acceleration is 0. So we're going to shove a 0 here. Meters per second squared, because it's a change in velocity over time. And what about in the y direction? What do we know about acceleration in the y? Yeah. It's 10 meters per second squared. Money. It's 10 meters per second squared. How do you know that? Because of gravity. Yeah, gravity. Exactly. Sweet. We know that gravity is making it fall 10 meters per second squared. Every second, the marble is going to get quicker and quicker to the ground in the y direction. So we know our acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. This is what we're, our final solving point is, the distance in the x. Um, our distance in the y, what does that mean? Yeah. How far the table is from the ground. How far the table is from the ground. Or how far the table is from our cup. Because our cup is catching the ball. So we're going to be measuring the height of the top of the cup from the height of the table to see the difference in from where it shoots off to where it lands. Does that kind of make sense? So we're going to measure that in one second. And then the time we obviously don't know. So right now, there's only three things we do know. And what we're going to do right now is find the initial velocity and the final velocity in the x direction. We're going to find the distance in the y. And then we're just going to straight up try to solve this problem. We are going to solve this problem to find all the missing variables, just like we did yesterday. So what we'll do right now is we'll start by measuring um, distance in the y direction. So I want you to to put your cup on the ground and try to figure out what's the difference between the top of the cup and the top of the table. And then fill in your table with that height in meters. So I'll, I'll repeat one more time. You're going to take the cup, put it on the ground, or you can do it different ways. You can measure the height of the cup and subtract that from the height of the table to the ground. But right now, I'll just spend the next minute figuring out dy. dy. All right, go for it. No. Yeah. When it's coming up on the top, it is. I don't know. If it's, yeah, I don't know if it's on the top of the cup. On the top of the cup. It's a um the table right here. It was Make sure your measurements in meters. So if it's in centimeters, use your metric skills to convert it to meters. Look, I tell you what, what is this? This is a one. Here we go. Morning. Oh. Let's do this. Oh. oh.